What is the most important innovation in road cycling? Well, there have been a few, but without doubt, one of the most important innovations is the clipless pedal. They're widely used now, but this wasn't always the case. It wasn't until 1985, when Bernard Eno won the Tour de France using clipless pedals, that the world actually started to take notice. And he did so using a pair of the now legendary Look Pedal Automatique. So we've decided to come and make a video about the development of clipless pedals and to see how they're made today. And to do so, we thought who better to team up with than the clipless pedal pioneers, Look. Look has a really impressive history and heritage in clipless pedals. The interesting thing here is that Look's history prior to this was actually in something else, ski bindings. And the company was looking for another revenue stream for when, well, it wasn't winter. And so it turned to cycling. And since then, Look has continued to develop and innovate clipless pedal technology and, well, hasn't looked back since. So, no pun intended on the repeated use of Look. The next key design was this, the Look Carbo Pro, which has an aluminium body, which made it really good in terms of durability and longevity, but it was quite weighty, so Look wanted to make lighter pedals, if possible, because cyclists are always obsessed with the weight of their parts. So then they made this, the CX-7, which came out in 1993. And this was a really cool pedal, because it actually featured a carbon fiber body and was the first pedal to do so and was really adjustable as well. You could actually adjust the Q factor and also the tilt on this pedal as well, which is really interesting. But it wasn't a huge commercial success for Look because it was really expensive to produce. They then brought out this, the Look Keo, and that used the smaller Keo cleat rather than the bigger Delta cleat that was found on the older pedals. This also had a carbon fiber body and it's really, really light. Then technology continued to improve all the way to the current day, and they eventually moved away from springs and brought out this, the Look Keo Blade, the first one. You can see it's got the carbon leaf spring sort of on there instead of the metal spring in the back of the cleat. This particular one also has a titanium axle to make it even lighter, and it's really light. And then that takes us all the way up to the present day, the current Look Keo Blade Carbon, and now you can see that the blade is actually bigger and fills the back of the pedal because this makes the pedal more aerodynamic. And it's better for the airflow coming underneath. And in case you're wondering what the difference in weight is between this and this, well, this weighs about 90 grams and this weighs, well, well over 200 grams. So yeah, quite a big difference. Clipless pedals might seem like quite a simple object, but there's actually a really impressive amount of engineering that goes into them. So here I have all the individual components that make up the Look Keo Carbon Blade Titanium, which is Look's most advanced pedal that they currently make. So first up we have this, which is the main body of the pedal, and it's an injection molded carbon composite body, and then it has a steel alloy base plate on there as well that's fixed in place. You've got the back of the pedal, which is the bit that holds your cleat in place, and that's secured by this sort of axle, if you will. And then there's the spring, which is the Keo carbon blade that gives the pedal its name. And they have different numbers on corresponding to the strength of that blade. And it gives a different spring tension depending on the number that's on there. So the higher the number, the more the tension, and you can swap them out. Then there's the other bits as well. So we've got some various washers, we've got the bearing, and then we've got the axle, which on the lightest pedal look does, the titanium is a titanium axle. It really is light, and then that just slots in place here. But to see how this all fits together, we're gonna have a look behind me now, because there's a load of really cool machines that like slot all the bits together. So let's go have a look. The first step is the injection molding of the main pedal body, which I've got here. And then the next step is to get the Look logos and little decals on there. And the way they do that is in this printing room. So they start like this with nothing on them. And then using this machine, they can print Look logos on them really fast and all the other little logos as well. If you look on these two trays, this is cool. That tray's yellow 
and that tray's blue. And that's a really simple way that look separates the left and right pedals. So the left pedals are all blue and the right pedals are all yellow. That's how they keep everything separate throughout the entire production process, throughout the entire factory. Pretty simple, but cool. The next component that goes in the pedal is that all-important blade spring. Now, this is one of the few components that's not made in France. It's actually made in Tunisia, in Lux's factory over there. So I think we should teleport over to Tunisia and see it being made now. Whew, that was quick. So the raw carbon arrives here in Tunisia in the form of massive rolls, and it's pre-impregnated with an uncured resin. Now, what happens is, is the rolls are then cut into sections, and then multiple layers are combined together and pressed together in a big press to make these thicker laminate sections like we have here. These laminate sections are then rolled by hand in this room here to give it that predefined cross-section shape of the final blade spring. The shaped laminate section is then placed in this heated press for seven minutes at 150 degrees. And after that, it's then placed in another oven where it cures the resin further. And the result is this stiff shaped plate I've got here. But this is still far removed from the finished article we see in the blade pedal. So this is now shipped back to Nivers in France so that it can be finally transformed into the spring. So these are the pieces, well, the blades that come as they do from Tunisia. And then this long sheet here is cut into 12 individual blades that fit into a pedal. Then it's polished so that it has a nice finish on it and the transfer is applied to it as well that says the Kio blade and the, also the number referring to the stiffness of each one. Cool. We're now in the main room where Look assembles its pedals and there's two lines. So here you have the spring zone, which is for Look's Kio pedals with a spring actuation at the back. And then just over here, you've got the blade zone, which is for Lux Kio carbon blades that have the blade spring system in there. And you can see there's two, uh, well, the assembly line is split into two halves. We have that continuation of yellow on the right and blue on the left to keep the pedals separate. So left hand pedals on this side, right hand pedals on this side, all the way to the end down there where they package the pedals. And that's the only point at which they come together. The first step of the assembly is to take the body, the blade, this back part here, and then this rod, and this machine pushes it all together and slots it into place. Much better than my hands are trying to do it right now. Midway through the assembly of each Kio blade carbon is a quality control test, where they put it in this machine here, which sort of pushes it forwards and backwards 60 times to, uh, stress test it, and if it's not of the standard, it will fail and break during this test. After the stress test, the next step is the axle assembly within the pedal, and that's done using this machine here, which sort of presses everything into place. It's really quick and impressive. So the axle is pressed into place, the bearing goes in as well, and then an end cap that seals it all up is also pressed on at the end as well. As you can see here, so there's one without the axle in place, and you see the end cap there. Cool, huh? The last manufacturing process is putting the pedal spindle through inside the pedal, and there's an end cap as well, and that's actually glued in place and then locked tight it on. And then it predetermines, with a predetermined torque, screws on the end cap on really fast. It's like a Formula One pit lane gun. It's really cool. We're almost at the end of the production line, but we've reached a hurdle which needs to be overcome by every set of pedals that Look makes. And that is quality control, which is something that Look absolutely prides itself on. So in this box are pedals which haven't passed quality control for different reasons. And they're all assessed and they're given a different color coded sticker depending on what's wrong with them. So what Look will do is take this away, they'll recycle all the parts that aren't faulty and put them back into the production line. And the ones that are, well, they'll just get rid of them. But in order to make sure that Lux products pass quality control, 
they have a really cool room, which I think I should go and show you now. So check this out, right? This is the first test, and this machine cleverly simulates a cleat going into a pedal, unclipping, and clipping back in again. And what they do to test the pedals is they make this work for 24 hours, and that simulates three years of intensive pedal use, all in 24 hours. Amazing. We've managed to uh, lose some of the noise because the look mechanics have gone for their lunch break. I'm sure the screaming pedals will be delighted. So on to the next test, which is to test the bearings and the axle of the pedals. So the pedal is placed in this machine here. It then has a load of 90 kilograms pulling down on it, and then it goes through two million cycles. And that's placed also at an offset within a cam of five millimeters. So it puts more stress on the spindle and the bearing rather than just spinning it round on its center axis. They also do an offset of five degrees, so the pedal's actually wonky as it spins round uh, in the cycles as well. And to do two million cycles in both of these tests, it takes two weeks to do two million cycles. That's amazing, and a huge amount of stress on the pedal. It's in there screaming for two weeks. It doesn't end there, though. These pedals really do get a tough time at look. This machine is actually testing the bearings and the spindle of the pedal and even more. And again, they have to be able to survive this in order to pass Lux test and go into production. Now that we've been satisfied that quality control has been taken care of, we can head back to the packaging zone. I'd like to say that no pedals were harmed in the making of this video, but that, that would be a lie. We're now at the end of the line, which is packaging of the final completed pedals that have also passed quality control. So we've got all these boxes here. These empty boxes, well, the packaging is designed by Look and it's made in Nevers as well in France and just driven down the road. The completed pedals are put in there and they are put in their finished complete boxes, which I think you'll agree wraps things up nicely. <laughs> So, I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. And if you'd like to watch another video, then why not check out our Look Factory Tour, where we go to visit Look's bike frame factory in Tunisia and see how carbon frames are actually made. It's really cool.